All right, Bothell City Council is back from the uh, executive session. I was asked by the, uh, the camera guy to, to again remind everybody uh, that the back wall, if you lean against it, there's three cameras that are mounted to it, and so it starts wobbling and it causes uh, motion sickness at home. So if you could just move away from it, you can go out in the hallway and, and there's a, uh, a TV and audio in there as well and seats, so. All right, so we are reviewing the projected agenda. Is there any changes to the projected agenda? Seeing none. Mayor? Oh. Uh, just not a change, but just a, a heads up. I um, will be able to attend on the 5th because I work, and I also work on the 12th, but I'm working with, uh, I'm trying to find somebody that can at least relieve me so I could be here for the last meeting of the year. Okay, uh, Councilmember Agnew is also not available December 5th, right? Mr. Mayor, just Councilmember Seymour? So that there's not a concern for quorum, um, I um, have to arrive late, so I will try and be here as close to meeting time as possible, but I have that work conflict as well. Okay. Okay, any other um, projected agenda items? Seeing none. Visitor comments. So I do, there are sign-up sheets outside if you're so inclined to grab one of those. And then I just read this thing real quick out of our protocol manual. Each person addressing the council will give his or her name in an audible tone of voice for the record. And unless the council grants further time shall limit the address to three minutes. No person other than the council and the person having the floor will be permitted to enter into any discussion either directly or through a member of the council without the permission of the mayor. And the first one, this is the most I've ever seen by the way, uh, is Megan Johnson. Thank you for letting me go first. Um, impatient, uh, they only have so much patience. <clears throat> uh, my name is Megan Johnson and I am here to speak to you as a concerned citizen in regards to the opening of safe injection site in Bothell. I realize that's not necessarily on the agenda but I would like to give my, uh, that I not open to it, I think I'm very opposed to it. As a former alcohol drug therapist, the idea of safe injection sites create a conundrum morally as well as therapeutically. When counseling addicts, it is imperative to teach the individual who is early in sobriety to avoid situations that would trigger their desire to use, allowing for new thinking and healthy behaviors to start to emerge. I watched as someone I love go down the spiral of alcoholism, losing his family, including children, struggling with anxiety and depression, as well as the difficulty that comes with needing to form new places and friends. I saw others around enable him, which only perpetuated his addiction. Giving addicts a place to safely use and go back into society only enables their addiction, which only continues the cycle of destruction. Addicts have created a toxicity to the brain as a result of killing neurons and rewiring brain connections. Continuing the addiction only exacerbates these issues. Only abstinence can give the addicted individual a chance to fix the damage. Some food for thought. Studies show that safe injection sites do not decrease the public nuisances of illicit drug use activity. It is not clear based on studies of safe injection sites if the high risk IV drug users that we are hoping to use these sites will actually use them. It has also shown that police presence at the sites will reduce the use of the sites. Just as an alternative to think of. According to several conservative estimates, every dollar invested in addiction treatment program yields a return of between $4 and $7 in reduced, r reduced drug-related crime, criminal justice costs, and theft. When savings related to health care are included, total savings can exceed costs by a ratio of 12 to 1. Washington State ranks 47 in the nation for access to mental health and substance abuse treatment. Instead of doing a safe injection site, maybe an alternative would be to open a meth more methadone and suboxone clinics where people can actually try to get abstinent, be abstinent and work on treatment. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, next is Gretchen Taylor. Good evening. My name is Gretchen Taylor. I'm a King County resident and I'm the mother of an active heroin user. 
Uh, for over two years, King County and Seattle City Council have been trying to, quote, sell us on the benefits of injection sites. Hundreds and hundreds of hours have been spent persuading voters about how beneficial injection sites will be for those who are addicted and beneficial, interestingly enough, for the residents of the, quote, chosen neighborhood within a given city. The 88% increase in overdoses this year and the escalation in crime in Vancouver, British Columbia, where the Insight injection facility is located, does not support the baseless claims of positive benefits to either those who are addicted or to the citizens of Vancouver. Under th threat is the health and the safety of every citizen in every city and neighborhood in their city if it is chosen by King County to be the location for installation of an injection site. 70,000 voters of King County embraced democracy and voiced their opinion when they signed the I-27 petition to ban injection sites in King County. The cities of Sammamish, Issaquah, Renton, Bellevue, Federal Way, Auburn, Kent, and Burien have honored the democratic process in listening to the voices of their constituents. The city councils of these cities have realized that the decision to provide a site where illegal drugs can be injected is a nonpartisan issue and that residents should have the opportunity to speak and voice their concerns and opinions on allowing injection sites within their city limits. It's imperative that the installation of an injection site be placed on the Bothell City agenda, City Council agenda. Let the evaluation begin. Let the residents of Bothell have a voice in this decision. I ask you, the council, to schedule heroin injection sites for the agenda no later than December 5th. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Gretchen. Oh, wait. You were Gretchen, right? Next is uh, Jennifer Asplin. My name is Jennifer Asplund and I reside in North Seattle. Thank you for the opportunity to speak to you all today. I'm here to urge all of you to um, oppose the opening of an injection consumption site and remind you all that don't be fooled by the name when they say CHELS, C-H-E-L-S, that's Community Health Engagement Locations, that's an injection drug consumption site. If they say CIS, S-I-S, safe injection spaces, that's a consumption site. And so I don't want any of you to be misled when you hear the fluff words or the sugar coating of CHELS because that's not what it is. It's going to be an injection site. My brother died about three or four years ago from long-term use of heroin and other drugs that he consumed. He didn't die from an overdose. He died from the long-term use, and he started shooting up when he was 13. I was finding needles when he was 13. So I would urge you all, let all of your constituents here tonight have a voice. Let it be heard before December 5th. Whether you agree with it or not, it needs to be on your agenda so that this can be a democracy and people can have a voice about it. Thanks. Thank you. Next is Whitney Negemeyer. Thank you. Hi, my name is Whitney Negemeyer, and I'm a resident of Bothell. This is my third time commenting on the purchase of the Wayne Golf Course property. My message remains the same. The city should move forward with the purchase of the property for conservation purposes and the restoration of the Sammamish River and surrounding habitats, habitats for wildlife, including salmon. As the city continues to grow, non-developed spaces such as the Wayne property become even more important to maintain habitat function and recreational opportunities for residents to connect and appreciate the environment. The Wayne property is of particular re regional importance to the Lake Washington watershed and endangered Chinook salmon. 
this section of the Sammamish River serves as a migratory corridor for salmon between Lake Washington and salmon streams such as North Creek, Bear Creek, and Issaquah Creek. The Wire, uh, the Wire 8 Chinook Salmon Conservation Plan update identifies lethal and sublethal temperatures in the Sammamish River during adult migration as, the key con as a key constraint to the recovery. The registration of riparian habitats on the Wayne property would provide shade along the river, minimizing the effects of direct sunlight. In fact, the plan calls for at least a 10% increase in riparian cover by, the, by 2025 along the Sammamish River. Restoration of this property would be a big step towards that habitat goal. The historical abundance of Chinook salmon in Sammamish River is estimated to be 8,500 fish, and today the average per year is only 1,269, which includes habitat which includes hatchery origin fish. We have a long way to go. Chinook salmon are not only a community resource for the people of this region, but endangered southern resident killer whales. Their population is at a 30-year low of only 76 individuals. These whales depend on Chinook salmon and would benefit from restoration of the Wayne property. I'd like to express my appreciation to the city for prioritizing projects such as North Creek Forest, the Wayne Golf Course, and Shelton View Woods. I understand that protecting these properties is expensive and complicated to finance. I urge the City Council to carefully weigh the costs and benefits of active use on the front nine and actively work with the community to ensure that everyone's goals are met. I'm also the director of a regional nonprofit group called Whale Scout. Our mission is to protect Pacific North Wales through land-based conservation experiences. We've worked with Friends of North Creek Forest, among many other local groups, including Evergreen Karate and Jiu Jitsu, where I teach young kids, bringing hundreds of people and families to volunteer planting trees and restoring habitat. Whale Scout has pledged their support for this project in the past and continues to offer their assistance in volunteer man hours and educating the public about the importance of the Wayne property within the greater Puget Sound ecosystem. This Saturday, we partnered with Forterra to offer a community event on the Wayne property, illustrate, illustrating the connections between the golf course, salmon, and orcas. Am I done? That's it, yeah. Do you have the last uh, final words or anything real quick? Uh, final word is to move forward with the purchase of this property. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. <laughs> Next is Grace Meadows. I only recently found out about this project and I just, I don't have anything prepared per se, but I just want to say that I would like, I would ask common sense prevail. Enabling drug addiction is not a cure. It's not helping anyone and the people that are involved, it's a conveyor belt to death. And in doing so, we don't know. These people have a destiny. We have no idea what it is. We may allow someone to shoot up and kill themselves. It could be another John F. Kennedy, Martin Luther King, somebody that's going to find a cure for cancer, and they don't have a chance. There are just so many other alternatives intelligent alternatives. And people want to stick their heads in the sand. They want to ignore it and it'll go away. No, it won't go away. This is a plague. It's an epidemic. And in Europe, when the plague hit, they swept people up and put them in a wagon, carried them away and burned the bodies. Well, what is going to happen here? People die. And someone just said they don't necessarily die in the injection site. And are we going to go around with a truck and scoop up the bodies and burn them? This is not an option, not an option at all. And any intelligent thinking person has to know better and, and do the right thing and just obliterate this and find ways to heal these people, to restore them. 
Restoration is the answer, not enabling drug addiction. And thank you. Oh, my name is Grace Meadows. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Next is Duane Love. Good evening. My name is Duane Love. I am a resident of Bothell. And uh, I just want to thank the, the council here, and I, I hope they will continue to look at this. I want to go on the record. I'm strictly opposed to any kind of an injection site. Uh, number one, it, last I checked, heroin was illegal. So why the council would even want to look at allowing something like that is beyond me. There's so much better ways to spend our tax money, uh, spend our social service money, and I, I don't see it as being a good thing for Bothell. I graduated from Bothell High School here many years ago. Uh, Bothell has certainly changed, and this, if they bring around this change of opening up some safe injection site, that's not a good change. So thank you, and I bring this up next month if you would where you can get a vote on it and get the people's vote on it and get their input because I don't think you're going to find a lot of support for it. Thank you. Next is Katrina <laughs> Miusi. 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 Is that close? Miusi. Very good. Okay. Estonian. Uh, respectfully, I'd like to speak to the um, council. Thank you for having us here today. Um, I live in Bothell, and I work at an elementary school just a stone's throw from here. And um, I have great concern about a heroin injection site being in our area. As you all know, drugs are rampant. Um, if you go up to Inglemore High School or any of the high schools, um, it's an issue that's going on. Um, as public health nurses, we are trying to help kids get into treatment and find different avenues to get out of that lifestyle. And certainly the heroin injection site is not going to help us in that process. Um, so I would respectfully ask that this is put on the agenda for December 5th. Thank you. Next is Jonathan Sanasak. And Daniel Ewing. Hi, right, thank you for your time. So my name is Jonathan Senesak. I just moved here from the East Coast uh, in April, and I'm a resident of Bothell, and I work in Bothell at Seattle Genetics now. And I've been very enthusiastic to hear about Forterra and One Bothell and the Wayne property. Um, I'm a disc golf player, and I was really hoping that I could show my support for uh, the Wayne Golf Course and disc golf because when I moved to Virginia, I didn't know anybody. It's kind of a similar similar situation. Uh, excuse me, uh, where I, you know I'm looking for a community and to meet people and to get out and do things and be active, and uh, disc golf was my avenue for that. And I'd like to just show that it's a, a great sport. I kind of say it's a sport for the people. It's a very minimal impact on the environment. And um, I've met a lot of people and um, traveled around playing tournaments and things like that. And I think it could be used as a good fundraiser to help for uh, funding for the, the, the course. Yeah. And I'm Daniel Ewing, another local. Uh, continuing in disc golf for both disc golfers as well as many people around the room. Uh, as case point, uh, this weekend we had an impromptu event where we had 20 volunteers show up and 39 players with less than a week's heads up. We all brought out our own equipment, set it up, tear it down. Uh, almost every disc, every disc golfer carries a bag for our discs, and most of us pick up trash and put it in our bags as we go along. Uh, very, very low impact, doesn't require much of any maintenance. Uh, and then as far as tournaments, as he was saying, people will travel, stay at hotels, eat in restaurants. Uh, sometimes hundreds, large, will get thousands of people coming in to play and spectate. Uh, and definitely have the grounds and the community to support such an endeavor over time. And one other thing, the, the blight, there is a course now. However, it's not really, it doesn't drain very well. It's very muddy and 
so when I moved out here, I played it once, but because I was in like knee deep mud, I kind of moved to different areas, and so now I'm traveling up to Monroe to play. But I really like to stay in the the area. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Elaine Diana Baldwin. Good evening, Council. Uh, my name is Elaine Diana Baldwin. Um, I'm here because I want to please, I, I really do want to see a permanent ban on the injection sites. I think that we owe that much to our children and to the next generation. I remember there was a time when all, most of the schools had a DARE officer in the schools. And I see a conflict there. It was supposed to be just say no to drugs. Whatever happened to that, it really breaks my heart to see the different things going on to where people are going to get these injection sites and stay down and perhaps even die because of it. So please put this on your agenda. December 5th. I, I beg of you. Thank you very much. Next is Kathy Fabrichet. I'm Kathy Furbrache and I'm a resident of Bothell. And I'm here to ask you to please accept the conservation grants, which are the Salmon Recovery Funding Board grants and King Conservation Future Trust Fund grants. Please respect the will of over a thousand participants who participated in the visioning process in 2016 and prioritize conservation over non-conservation activities taking place on parts of the property with less conservation value. Please use the city park impact fees not spent thanks to the conservation grants to move toward park equity in the Snohomish County part of the city. Please proceed with the purchase as planned in the summer not with the changes recommended by staff. My understanding is that staff is recommending that the city use its own funds rather than the county and the state money. Thus, it wouldn't have its own money available for projects that can't get outside funds. Please do not abandon the salmon recovery function. Thank you. Next is David Bain. Hi, I'm David Bain, and I'm also here to speak in opposition to the staff recommendation uh, to return the conservation grants. While I fully support the purchase of the front nine, it should be done with conservation grants in place that are the fruits of the labor of city staff, county staff, one Bothell, our state legislators, our county councilmen, both in King and Snohomish counties, the King Conservation Futures Board, and Forterra. The city's credibility is on the line. Staff proposes to throw years of work and commitments out the window. It proposes to waste limited city funds on a purchase that could be made at much lower cost to Bothell taxpayers. It recommends closing the door to funding from the governor's proposed salmon and killer whale recovery plan at the time he finally has the votes to pass it. Staff claims flexibility justifies this action while ignoring the far greater flexibility the city's funds would create if spent elsewhere in the city. Staff recommends going against the recommendations of RIA 8 which Bothell's representative supported. To quote, acquire the Wayne Golf Course, once protected, restore 
both banks of the Sammamish River and Lower Wainita Creek. Staff failed to consider the science behind this recommendation. The Bear Creek ESU of Chinook salmon is threatened. In the last 20 years, it was extirpated from Swamp Creek, which passes through the west side of Bothell. It has been nearly extirpated from North Creek, which passes through the east side of Bothell. Immediate action is needed to begin recovery of this population and allow reoccupation of Bothell's creeks. Southern resident killer whales, which feed upon salmon from the Sammamish watershed, are an endangered species. They declined almost 10% from last year's count of 84 individuals to 76 at present. Action to recover them is extremely urgent. Staff is also recommending you ignore the work of over 1,000 local residents who contributed to the visioning plan last year. They rated conservation as the top priority for Wayne. City leadership ignoring the will of the people is what the majority on this council was elected to reverse. This is not to say that conservation is the only thing that should happen at Wayne. I welcome our friends from the disc golf uh, community. It is a large property and much of it can and should be used for things not intended to recover salmon. In particular, the area on the back nine that staff is proposing to put under a conservation easement has relatively low conservation value and its location next to the road makes it easily accessible for people. Similarly, the area where the clubhouse is located has limited conservation value and is the optimal location for a center to draw people to the site from the bike trails and Bothell Way. If we are to propose changing the council's direction to staff, I would recommend working on a land swap to allow the area along the bike trail to be used for parking and the lower part of the four acres not presently covered by the conservation easement could be protected in exchange. This would make it easier for people to access the western portion of the property and better protect the area most valuable to salmon. Thank you. Thank you. Jesse Sears. Hi right, guys. Uh, good to see everybody here tonight. It's been a long process. The last uh, few years we've been working on this, and I want to say, uh, you know, thank you for everyone's hard work from staff to everyone that's being here. This has been a great community thing, both for the city of Bothell and everybody that's been involved. Um, I would like to tell you to vote yes on um, funding the uh, front nine of Wayne Golf Course and then in the future on the back nine coming up here in December. Um, David, I think, did a great job of explaining one Bothell stance on the environmental impact that this property uh, has and the future within our city. Uh, I think it's a great story of knowing that we have one of the most densely populated uh, rivers that still has a wild salmon run that runs up it. It's our responsibility to take care of that in the future. If we uh, can change the um, banks, if we can change the river, we could probably have a very substantial uh, recreational uh, and environmental uh, impact on our city and our entire waterway throughout our uh, throughout this area. Um, one thing is that's really happened throughout this project is the amount of interest, not only from the public, uh, but from the partnerships that, the, that has been developed around this project. The big thing is, is that the city has developed partners with the county, with Forterra, with community groups, and with volunteerism that is ready to work forward uh, with this project and do all sorts of different projects along the way, from, from uh, restoration projects to working with uh, uh, recreational side of it. We learned very on in this process that Grants have legs, meaning that they can start dictating what the property can be. It's very important to understand what those grants are and what they can provide for the community and then also for the land base and the environmental impacts. But they also limit what can be used for the public. And we need clarification on what and why the staff's decision is to be able to put away some of the surfboard money and be able to uh, uh, allow other types of recreation. Uh, recreation is important. I think recreation and environmentalism go hand in hand personally. Um, I provided you with an economic analysis of the outdoor recreation in the state of Washington and what it brings in. And the conclusion of this is about $21 billion uh, per year coming to the state through recreational activities and the number one uh, activities that are all listed here are all available on that property and can be done with the uh, surfboard money that's available to us. Um, we just want communication, we want uh, clarification, and more than anything else, I think that uh, uh, we're looking for partnerships and being able to move forward with this in a positive way. I really appreciate you guys all being here, and I want to see a yes vote tonight 
on funding. Thank you. Bob Karzreed. Hello. Safe injection sites are a very controversial topic. I can understand why the City Council might be reluctant to address the topic, preferring to wait and let the King County Council take the lead in how this issue will play out. You were elected by the citizens of Bothell to look out for Bothell's interests. Uncomfortable as it may be, I urge you not to abdicate your responsibility, but to address the safe injection site issue directly. I had the opportunity to ask a friend who recently celebrated one year of abstinence from using heroin for her opinion on safe injection sites, figuring she probably had a unique perspective. Her intriguing response was her concern that somehow the drug companies would end up using them to make money. While I'm not as concerned as she is about that possibility, her response did cause me to think more deeply about who really benefits from safe injection sites. My concern is the people who might benefit the most are those who feel a need to do something about the terrible heroin epidemic, even if that something is not an effective intervention. I understand the goal of harm reduction, the harm reduction approach. I'm not convinced that safe injection sites really reduce harm. As a perhaps harsh illustration, more, many former drug addicts report that they did not establish lasting sobriety until they first hit bottom, hard. So let's envision someone who's a drug addict who uses safe injection sites and using a safe injection site saves him, protects him from contracting hepatitis C. Perhaps contracting hepatitis C is what would need to happen in order for him to hit bottom hard enough to establish lasting sobriety. By having that consequence for his behavior taken away, he might continue using drugs and perhaps even die. I'm aware of the fact that in um, Vancouver, the Safe Injection Program advertises the fact that they have not had any deaths within the safe injection sites, but I also understand that the number of deaths from heroin in the surrounding community is much, much higher than it is in the Seattle area, despite Vancouver having a smaller population. I'm concerned that we must make wise decisions and not make a decision that makes us feel better. We dare not be the primary beneficiaries of feeling good about doing something, even if it's causing greater harm. So I likewise, as a member of the community, ask that you, the council, schedule heroin injection sites for the agenda no later than December 5th. Thank you. Richard Helgeland. Good evening. I'm Richard Helgeland. I'm a retired naval officer in naval intelligence. I'm also a retired a director of training of the largest private investigation school in the entire United States. I've had a lot of investigative training, a lot of investigative experience. I've also had a lot of public experience. I've been involved in the Seattle Crisis Clinic for a considerable period of time. I've been asked to be relieved from the Seattle Crisis Clinic to volunteer, and I was asked to be volunteered by the Northwest Hospital to work with some of their critically ill patients. I also was asked to be jo join the uh, Evergreen Hospital uh, Crisis Clinic. And in addition to that, I was asked to join, which I did join, uh, the um, Monroe Prison System. And uh, that was quite an experience too. That, so I, I've been exposed to over those with the crisis clinic, the hospice, well, even the hospice, because there were drugs involved with, with that as well, and certainly in the prison systems. And I, I just, uh, I, I just, I cannot be supportive of an injection site 
here in the city of Bothell that would attract even more drug people into this area. I've had, I think more than the average by far exposure to criminal aspects and I don't want to do anything to enhance that. I strongly recommend you don't support that issue. Thank you. Thank you. Sir, 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 is it is it Lieutenant Commander? Yes, sir. I just want to um, thank you for your service. Right. Uh, next is William Matson. Oh, okay. We got lots of them, so next one is Jim Freeze. My name, my name is Jim Freeze. Uh, uh, good evening. I, I've I'm here to speak in support of the acquisition of Lane Golf Course and to get right to the point, um, ask you to oppose the staff recommendation to waive grants uh, that were received for purchase of that property and instead use city funds. I want to put a different twist on it than has been mentioned. I, I think the points about how that money could otherwise be used and all of the organizations involved are very good points, but I want to add one. There's a human dimension going on in here in Bothell that <laughs> I think there are city councils around the state of Washington would die to have their community come out and show this much interest for the work of the council. I mean, I, it wasn't like this very often, uh, I don't think, for quite a while. And I recall this council um, and most of the people are still the same. Um, I recall this council needing way more money than uh, we're talking about that the city has that they would spend down at Wayne Golf Course, and they were wringing their hands because they couldn't get it for an acquisition along the Sammamish River. I can't remember if that was Fitzgerald or something. I don't know remember what, what it was now, but anyway, the, the thing that's happened here in Bothell in the time that I've been in, uh, involved I mean, there are community members that spend hundreds of hours helping write grants for conservation. And, and when this council had first raised the issue or staffed it, we don't have the staff to take care of all of this open space. We made ourselves available. We went through with it and the community is still here. We've got all of these interconnected groups, Shelton View Forest, um, Fred's of North Creek Forest, next door but across everywhere, Snow King Watershed Council, um, the big one, Mountain to Sound Greenway Trust. Um, everybody's been involved. This isn't just one purchase, it's part of a whole matrix, it's part of a whole corridor. It's a rewilding of Bothell and I, I think it brings a very high quality of life uh, to be doing this and I think that's one of the reasons why so many people support it. I want to just say in closing how much I appreciate um, what it takes to sit up there and listen to all of these different points of view. And I also want to say that in working with Bothell staff, um, when I was working with Friends of North Creek Forest, I know the challenges and how thin you can get spread. So I, it's not, I'm not arguing against work that's been done, simply saying let's use that city money elsewhere stick with the grounds we got for the park. Thanks. Next is Michelle Connor. Good evening, Michelle Connor with Forterra. 
I guess I'm out of time. All right. <laughs> next, <laughs> next is Edward. Just kidding. Go ahead. So all I wanted to say is in 2015, the community was in a little bit of distress about the opportunity to save this property. And you all asked us to go out and see what we could do to get a hold of it. We did. Worked hard with the staff to try to create resources so you have a choice about how to fund it. The future's in your hands. Thank you for your leadership. You got a great legacy to take to the next step. Penmanship on this one's a little rough, but a D Dom's Do. My name's Deborah Doms. I'm an osteopathic physician, which is D-O. Oh, you're a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. And uh, I appreciate the opportunity to speak to you. I'm um, an anesthesiologist by training residency, board certification in anesthesia and pain management. I spend some of my time treating private patients with pain, and I spend some other parts of my time treating addicts with medication-assisted treatment at a facility on the east side. And I also signed I-27. I was um, absolutely incensed at the behavior of the Seattle City Council in ignoring the voice of all of us and persisting in promulgating this very misguided attempt to, to uh, I'm not sure what they're trying to do because the problem is is that injecting drugs is a very seductive habit. Not only do you have the addiction to the substance, you have the addiction to the whole ritual around injecting the fascination with the needle, and that is almost more difficult to break than the habit with the addiction to the substance. So it's completely erroneous to think that injecting and supporting injecting has anything to do with becoming recovered. And I agree with the gentleman earlier who said people really need to bottom out. What needs to be done to mitigate uh, addiction to narcotics is more access to medication-assisted treatment. I have a DEA waiver, which allows me to prescribe Suboxone for addiction. There's also a substance called Vivitrol, which is an injectable substance so that it's taken out of the user's hands as to whether they're going to use on a daily basis. And then there's methadone for the people who are very uh, hardcore and probably um, aren't going to get back to be being functional in a society. But the point of treating addiction, because it is a pathway to death, is to get someone functional. And the idea is to get someone functional, they have to not be using drugs. Uh, there is no one, no matter the availability of counseling, that's aided and abetted in injecting that is going to have the slightest thought of not doing so or getting clean and sober. I, I support the idea of getting people uh, access to treatment. I don't support the idea and the misguided notion that the city of Seattle is promulgating and trying to shame the other cities around here into if you don't support an injection site, you don't care about addiction. So please don't fall for that. Edward Norton. Good evening. I'm a resident of the surrounding community to the city of Bothell. Let's take a look at the bigger picture, shall we, in terms of what these injection sites will do. First, let's say you get the wish and you have an injection site. What happens? People from the community and outside of the community will show up knowing that there is a place they can shoot up without any threat of the law. Second, homelessness that goes with it will also increase because many of these people are homeless because of their addiction. Third, 
pushers will come to the area knowing that there is a location for a market for their products. Fourth, as the population increases and these problems go up, not only will law enforcement be stressed for the other crimes that are associated with this so-called site, but the people of Bothell will have to bear the burden of the costs, not only to their safety, but in taxes for the city to deal with an increasing problems. Reference Seattle. Next up, the other problem is, how does this city council have the authority legally to nullify state and federal law when it comes to controlled substances? Answer, you don't. And then on top of that, how are you going to instruct an officer of the peace whose sworn duty is it to protect the public to look the other way in one of these sites when he knows that people in it have illegal substances? So I want you to consider the logistics of such a proposal and how it doesn't solve the drug problem, it enables it. You're not helping these people get off the drugs. Simple as that. And as we've seen in Seattle, homelessness is going crazy. But I do want to ask the city council here, who all took an oath of office to uphold the law as part of your public service. Would any of you, if you are for these injection sites, have any objections to putting them next to your personal residences so you can see exactly how things pan out. Just thought I'd bring that to the table. Thank you. Next is Sid Saini. Oh, can I go in that place? I'm sorry, what? Can I take Sid's place real quick? And your name was, are you on the list? I'm not on the list. Okay, go ahead. Hello, my name's Marcus Dorsey. I'm a pioneer of the Western frontier. I have come for life, liberty, and property, but as of now, I don't own any property, so I am what many people call homeless. What that man said was absolutely correct, and I, I um, well, I'm not necessarily, but uh, okay, in, in regards to the, the injection site, which I'm new here, so I'm not going to really chime in on that, but I'm from Englewood, California, and uh, I was born in the 90s, and the, that crack epidemic ruined my community, so I would warn against allowing uh, people to come here and use drugs. I came here, I had a friend who asked me if I found solace in the landscape around me, and I have in Washington, it's beautiful here. Uh, I, you know, protect your community. Um, this is the warmest I've been in a while. I'm homeless, and your body heat is warming me, so I'm feeling very warm, and I'm, I thank you for that. Um, I came here to address homelessness. Uh, I am homeless. A lot of the times, you know, we don't know why people are homeless, so they all get grouped into a box, homeless. Um, if you have a, a baby, then you become a family and they get the priority. A single man that's homeless, there's really, it's, uh, and I'm a terrible speaker, I'm just here. But um, I always had a horrible time with mathematics. And I remember I got very upset when I was learning in school, I didn't do good. But my teacher, they gave me a, a, a problem and I, I, I was after school for a long time trying to solve it. And they finally, they gave me the answer. They said, there's no solution. And uh, I'm hoping that this isn't one of those situations where there's no solution. Uh, I struggle with uh, mental health issues. And, uh, well, I would say thank you for your service in serving the community. I got to formulate my thoughts. But knowing that there's a community here and, a, and, and an involved community, there's going to be an opportunity for something. So I hope to one day uh, be able to serve the community. Uh, but first, I got to worry about my three meals a day. But um, yeah, thank you. So is Sid back? Sid Saini? There he is. Thank you, City Council, and thank you person who was speaking before me and took my spot. 
<laughs> I'm Sid Saini. I'm the King County um, resident, and I love the city of Bottle. Um, I'm going to talk a little differently, and I'm going to use very simple language. Um, I'm a recent graduate student from UW, and I've been an investor uh, up there. I have actually real life examples where I've known people who used to be my good friends who got addicted to heroin um, really bad and other kind of sort of drugs that have taken their life away from them. Um, they're not being able to focus on their studies or any education. They've been, they've been grown up in a really good family, but just somehow they got addicted. And I'm really here to talk about and opposing this opening of the injection sites because it's, it's like a chain that would never end once it started. Um, it's, it's, in very simple words, it's like your mother giving you poison, mixing with chocolate and Nutella, which I personally like, and it's like, here, here you take it, and then you're not gonna die right away. It, it will be good, but then eventually it's gonna take life away from you. And those people are not um, able to make those decisions, and that's why I'm here to speak with my friends and family over here to see if you guys can take a moment to really think about that. I'm actually also a recruit in police academy. I am going to be a police officer. Um, I'm also speaking from that kind of community perspective that I'm really opposing that. It's, it, it would never end. This is not, would be a good decision. So I really request you to take a time. It's a really important topic for the generation to come in, a younger generation like me. Um, you know, to thought about that um, and imagine like your own family, your own kids, that if somebody was addicted, would you be providing a helping hand to see, you know, how you can get them out of there or rather than providing that poison to destroy their own life. So I would really request the city council to include this in agenda by December 1st, I would say as soon as possible. Thank you. Next is Nadia Karalash. Hello, my name is Nadia Karalash, and um, I'm here to talk uh, about the safe injection sites, and I'm against them. And um, I'm asking my council members to please do not ignore the voices of the people. And there's an overwhelming amount of people who are against this. And I'm asking you, please do not ignore, because democracy is what we have. We have the voices of the people, and the people are not, in, unintel they're not unintelligent. They know, we know that this is not gonna be good. And if it's overwhelming, then please hear us out. And um, I would like you to understand that your leadership and your service here is, we, we need that. And you've been put in your position for a reason, to hear our voice and to hear our concerns. Don't ignore it. This is just, this, these safe injection sites are just gonna encourage the use of the substances that are going to hurt people. So I would ask you to please put this on the agenda as soon as possible. Thank you very much. I think it's Katja Lib. K A T, not sure the two letters. Happens all the time, that's okay. Um, so I'm Kat, and I am so happy to be here. This is amazing. I just, I don't know, I want to do this more often, but um, I am actually opposing um, what we call a safe injection um, sites. Um, well, one of the reasons is that my father passed um, away from heroin overdose. So when I heard about this, I honestly thought my friend was joking when she told me that you guys want to accept it. I'm not saying all of you, but um, I thought it was a joke. And then she told me it was serious, so I came here. And, um, you know, in order to solve an issue, um, you have to get down to the root of it. You cannot mow grass and then expect it to, you know, uh, not be there or, or trim trim uh, weight and then you you know you have to pluck it out you know so what I would say is to um, have rehab centers those are proven to be more effective than 
safe injection centers. And also, the last reason why I oppose this is because I'm a pre-med student right now. And, um, I, and, and, and I know that you guys want to hire like nurses to make sure that the heroin injectors are doing it correctly, I guess. I don't know. But I would not be able to, without as much compassion and love I have for people, and knowing that, you know, we're all like so different and nobody can be replaced, to be able to watch somebody do that, especially my dad, or just not even my dad only, but you or my neighbor or brother. Um, I just don't have it in me to witness that. So thank you for hearing me out. <laughs> Next is Eddie Shergill. Is that close? Yeah, very close. Thank you. <laughs> All right, good evening, uh, respected councilman members. Um, my name is Eddie Shergill. I'm a resident of King County. Really appreciate uh, the opportunity for me to like stand up here and speak to you guys. I'm here to uh, oppose the opening of the safe injection sites for illegal drugs. Because according to, uh, like, uh, Places like these, like, it will not solve the problem. It will encourage the drug use. For a scenario, if there's, like, someone sitting, uh, someone like me who's sitting like this, thinking of, like, hey, should I, like, use that drug? But I'm, like, scared of the consequences. I might overdose myself because I don't know how to do it. So those sites will encourage me to come to them and at least, like, try it once. You need at least, like, that's one try. Like, you need at least one try to get addicted to it. So I'm going to go there, try it once. I'm not going to get overdosed, but I'll be, like, getting all addicted and you... That those sites are turning somebody from completely sober to like to the addict who's gonna go there every time to get get it, uh, get his needs done. So instead of like looking uh, short term advantages, which have been advertised by these uh, safe injection sites, we should look at the like uh, long term effects. What will what they will have on our society? Uh, if these like uh, heroin injection uh, sites are open, so the like these are illegal. So, like, yeah, getting it, it, all the drugs are illegal, though. So anything sporting that should be illegal, too. So if these sites are open, like, we can um, just imagine, like, what will be next. There are, like, a lot of other illegal things in, the, in this broken system, which can be, like, people are ready to modify that, too, and make it legal. So instead of, like, spending money on these, like, injection sites, like, uh, for heroin and, and these injection sites, we should, like, open more rehabilitation centers and, with, like, ways to get those addict people who are out there in our community to make them to go to these centers instead of like just uh, helping them to get more uh, drugs. So I request you to like put uh, this on agenda immediately or before December 5th. Thank you. And these uh, sites should be like banned permanently. Uh, thank you very much. Next is Veronica Garcia. Hello, members of the council and everyone here. Uh, first of all, thank you for coming and thank you for hearing us today. Uh, my name is Veronica Garcia. I came tonight to represent and on behalf of the hundreds of Bothell residents who signed Initiative 27 to ban heroin injection sites. I myself am in Bothell on a daily basis and have come to love and appreciate the city. It's a beautiful place. I've also written a letter to the council on injection sites, which I received no response to. I understand certain members of the council have declined to put injection sites on the agenda, and I have some questions for you. Does the request of the hundreds of Bothell residents who signed Initiative 27 to ban injection sites matter to you? Does the request of the many people in this room tonight asking for injection sites to be banned matter to you? So far, 10 cities have been banned injection sites in King County. I'm calling for Bothell leadership to step up, put members of the community first, and get injection sites on the agenda by December 5th. Thank you.
Chad Morgan. My name is Chad Morgan, and I'm a resident here at Pothel. Um, I wanted to say thank you for the council and all their service that they do for us as a city. And um, I did want to ask that you guys would um, put the safe injection site um, topic on the uh, your agenda no later than December 5th. Thank you. Dan Henderson. Or that might be Don. Dan. Dan, okay. Uh, my name is Dan Henderson. Uh, thank you for this opportunity. Um, I'm here to support the uh, acquisition of the Wayne Golf Course. Um, I coach at the uh, Cascade Canoe and Kayak Racing Team. We're located in uh, at the Blue Heron Landing Marina here in Bothell. Um, we have uh, more than 5,000 um, participant program hours so far this year. So we put a lot of kids and adults and um, disabled people, including disabled veterans, on the water. Um, our youth camps um, serve as um, uh, introduction to our program. Um, we use racing as a vehicle for ongoing participation, and perhaps our participants will pursue an Olympic dream. We currently have two national team members, one of which is fourth in the world this year. Um, we also serve adults and then the Paralympic Paracanoe program where we've put two U.S. World um, Championship team members on the team. We also host races and hold events. Um, we, and last month we had 72 canoes and kayaks on the river uh, for a race. Um, we're looking for a possible home. Um, in, the, in Noah Park and a boathouse that would include a community room and we're prepared to fund it. There are many really good community partners that I've met um, through the organization of Forterra and um, I think that uh, we're all anxious to work with the city of Bothell to bring uh, restoration and great active recreational opportunities um, and we'd like to cascade. We'd like to be one of those partners. Thank you Bob Myers Hello council uh, I'm a resident of King King County. Uh, I don't currently live here in Bothell but I have relatives that do, but uh, I guess uh, for the seven of you, and I like the number seven, that's one of my favorite numbers, um, we're all about the same age. I mean, what are we thinking? Is, is this, is in, out, now, and up, down? How do we even get a proposition like this before us? I mean, I think most of the people here tonight, obviously, they're here for a reason. They oppose this move to uh, condone and facilitate uh, the use of uh, uh, heroin and other opiates, addictive drugs, you know, within this within this uh, locality. And if something like this gets pushed through, you know darn well that other communities, if they're pushed by Seattle, are going to use this as the precedent to justify it in their community too. So you seven are on the hot seat tonight, and I hope through the filming of this, your constituents see the move that you're going to make here in the future to put this ballot or this issue on a ballot on a referendum for your people to vote for. Because you're all personally responsible. Mr. Mayor, I I would have to say to you that you were the you were the driver in this uh, force here, and uh, I think you have the big voice to convince your members to push this in the opposite direction. This does not need to come uh, as even a vote. I mean, what are we thinking? How does this even get this far? Um, I'm not a very good public speaker, but I, I'll just read a few of my notes. I mean, in the first place, is heroin still an, uh, an illegal drug? If it's an illegal drug, how does it get to the point 
where a city council decides if they're going to support a refer uh, an initiative to justify the use of it within the confines of your community. How does that happen? I don't even understand how that can possibly happen, but apparently it's got this far. So I hope the rest of the people in this room, myself included, are going to hold you to this to the I mean hold your feet to the fire in order to to get this thing on a referendum this fall um, who's gonna pay for this and what what funding is going to have to be sacrificed to elderly or children or retirees or whatever in order to pay for it without raising taxes so the alternative would be to raise property taxes or whatever kind of taxes you have to raise in order to fund these kind of sites. And when you set up these sites, what happens then? You have a circus of providers of heroin circling these sites that are going to be providing the heroin and other opiates to these people using the sites. Is that my time? That's it. I had a few more things to say, but thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <clears throat> Jerry Newton. My name is Sherry Newton. I have I don't do this too often, so I'm just going to read it to you. Um, we are still a republic. We have the right to make the decision on issues that affect our community. You work for us. Our community will make the decision based on our vote. You need to provide us the opportunity to do that. I am against the injection sites for all the reasons said here tonight, and thank you everybody for what you have said. I'm also against keeping it off the agenda. Let us make the decision, and you have heard all those people. I am asking, as a member of the community, I'm asking the council to schedule the heroin and injection sites for the agenda for the December 5th. And it sounds like if you don't have it the defense of December 5th because you won't have enough people at that next meeting, I hope that you will be putting it on the de agenda and let us decide. And you've already heard what our decision is. That's Marie Noel. And I'm having a hard time reading the last name. Carnalin? Marie Noel? Nope. Next is Carol Johnson. Are you Carol Johnson? No, but she thinks she didn't sign up or she's allowing me to take her place. Is that a problem? I signed up. You signed up too? Well, I'll call you then. Oh, thank you so much. I no, really appreciate that. Are you, are you Mimi? I'm not Mimi. Okay. Well, can we, I have them in order of the order they were received. So I'm trying to just honor oh, that. Okay. I will totally step back then. Okay. I'm at Figueroa if I'm in there. Oh, you'll be here. <laughs> so I just want to make sure Marie, Noel, whatever the last name, not here okay uh mamie Fu. good evening council members thank you for having me here so we're here to uh, talk about a very uh, uh, heartfelt uh, issue, which is uh, whether to have an injection site to encourage addicts to continue to use or not. Uh, I, uh, my name is Mamie Fu. I live in Bellevue. Thank God Bellevue rejected the rejection site. So I want to have an opportunity to share some of uh, my thinking along the line. Um, a lot of people have already talked about the uh, benefits of not having a site as opposed to having a site. But to me, injection site uh, triggered a, a long, long ago repressed memory in my mind. Uh, I was born in China, 
So I would like to share some Chinese history regarding addition that happened in the 1800s period during the Qing Dynasty, which was the last uh, dynasty. And this was about the Opium War, where China lost the war twice. And every time China lost the war, the British demanded importing opium. So China became an open port, and large amounts of opium came to China with no resistance. We're talking about tons and tons of this, from the imperial city to the provinces to the neighborhood. Everybody was shooting opium. And to make the story short, I just want to paint a picture that the use of opium drug managed to kill about two generations of young men and young women that have, could have prospered. And it also killed the dynasty as we know it. So I just want to say that from the bottom of my heart, let's learn from history that already had this kind of stories. Why would we want to repeat it? Thank you very much. And I would just say that uh, to ask the council to please schedule the heroin injection sites for the agenda no, no later than December 5th. I have a very good feeling that you guys are going to choose the right way by rejecting it permanently, I hope. Thank you very much. Next is Alex, A-L-E-K-S. Hello there. Uh, my name is Alex. I live in King County. Uh, not from Bothell, but I'm from Renton, so I came a little ways. Uh, I just want to say thank you for hearing all of us out. And uh, if, you know, the amount of people in this room, uh, the amount of people that signed on to the initiative is any indication of how your community feels about uh, these safe injection sites, I think it'd be uh, a mistake not to hear it and not to put it on your agenda um, because it's obvious that the people, at least here in this room, uh, don't want it and, and there's a lot of us. Uh, I'm not going to go into reasons because people have already covered uh, you know, millions of reasons and I don't think I have any to add. Um, so I just ask that you put it on the agenda, um, just talk about it, encourage that discussion and uh, vote on it and permanently ban them. So Thank you. Have a good day. Michael Kimball. Hello. Um, so I'm here today for the same reason as many others. Uh, as a member of the community, I would ask you, the council, to schedule heroin injection sites for the agenda no later than December 5th. Uh, so just a little bit of uh, background. I have a sibling who uh, was was about to get into these hard drugs, and she led a really uh, rough life of living with drugs in general. And the kind of life that she led, stealing, lying, uh, staying out for days and weeks at a time, it, it hurt our family, it broke our family. And that's what these drugs do to people, and this is what these drugs do to families. I have a very close friend whose best friend died of an overdose uh, a couple years ago, and that, that was because of these drugs. And so... I don't I don't understand how anybody can justify allowing that kind of thing to be legal in this state in this country anywhere. Uh, just a couple statistics that I saw from the coroner service in Canada and also their Center for Disease Control since 2003 when they put in uh, this program into the government into British Columbia 
there have been no fewer than 178 deaths per year from overdoses and 178 was a low year it was from one year and the average has been about 250 per year and then starting in 2011 when a new type of drug reached the market it just started spiking last year in 2016 about 981 people died from drug overdoses and uh, the next year, this year, so far since September, 1,103 people have died from drug overdoses. I mean, if you look at the statistics, you've got to ask yourself and you've got to ask your fellow council members, is it really worth it to allow these drugs to be, to be sold in our communities and used by people so rampantly? Uh, I... I this this really hits hard uh, for me because I know so many people who have been personally affected by drugs and it, it just breaks people down and I don't think it's right to just ignore it. I don't think it's right to just ignore the fact and say, oh, it's not a problem, we would never do that, as I've heard several council members have said. I don't think it's right to ignore this issue because if we do, then eventually it's gonna be put in place and more damage is gonna be caused. In Canada, the drug overdose rate, it hasn't gone down at all. So I think that that's just a testament to the fact that if we let this happen in our state, in our country, anywhere, it's gonna be bad. So that's all I have to say. Let's go with Zelius. It starts with a C and then there's a couple of scribbles, O, N, I. It's okay, my uh, teachers all had a problem with that too. <laughs> so a uh, little bit of background about me. Um, I grew up pretty much homeless and I spent at least four years living literally on the streets. And I've seen um, the, uh, the heroin epidemic firsthand. I actually have a family member who's been heavily affected by it. She, she got addicted, she's my sister, she got addicted to it really heavily. And she eventually was able to get clean of it, thank, thank God. But um, one thing that she said to me when I told her that this was actually a matter of debate up here in Washington, is she, and I'm quoting just, that's stupid, you know. And uh, all caps, so imagine that just a lot louder. <laughs> but I want to say that, uh, as many people here have already uh, stated, the the drug problem uh, and pulling the or getting these um, safe injection sites uh, put into place isn't going to really help. It's going to uh, cause much higher, uh, or it's going to enable these uh, drug addicts to just keep doing it. And it'll, um, it's been shown to cause uh, more people to actually get into it over time. And I just want to say, you know, enabling these, peop uh, these people to get uh, drugs is not empowering them. And I just want to say, you know, in addition to all of this, ignoring the issue isn't going to help. Because as um, the guy that was just here uh, stated, it'll eventually uh, be an issue and we're going to we're going to get people on the other side of this issue just coming in and saying, hey, let's let's do it. Let's put them down. Let's uh, uh, put an injection site in. And I hope that with the abundance of people here that have voiced their opinion that you guys really just understand that it's it's something very important to this community. And the last thing I want to say is um, just please make this a matter of discussion no later than December 5th. Thank you. David, David Wickwire. Hello, my name is David Wickwire, resident of Bothell for 11 years, uh, lived in King County my entire life, and so I've seen it change dramatically over the years. Uh, I was on the parks board for six years once we moved here, and I wanted to give just a quick example how the 
priorities of the citizens and staff and city may diverge on certain issues. Uh, when we were on Parks Board, we were doing the master plan for the park at Bothel Landing. And we, over a six to eight month process, had four open houses, multiple Parks Board meetings on uh, the visioning process, worked with consultants. And on the night that we approved it, after all of that work, uh, we were told that staff had come up with an alternative park plan that they were going to present to council, which had heavier uses to uh, commercial. So there was a you know, possible restaurant, maybe some uh, residential spaces, if I remember uh, correctly. And so I urged the council not only to accept the purchase agreement, but to use the conservation funds and the restrictions that, that places because it takes out of the hands of all of us the preservation of that river and uh, we all know the story uh, of the child and the adult walking on the beach with a starfish uh, and the child is picking them up throwing them in one by one into the water and the adult says well you're not going to make any difference and the child looks at the adult and says I'm going to make a difference with this one I'm going to make a difference with this one and you may say that the, the slightly more impactful uses that we may put if we don't have these restrictions are not going to harm the salmon and you might get environmental impact statements on that you might get consultants to say that uh, but this is a chance for the city of Bothell to acknowledge and to um, to uh, affirm and approve what emanated from the citizens and I'll say one other thing when I was on the parks board is we were told there really isn't much money to do big things here and uh, and so uh, the fact that this emanated from the citizens, both the proposal for Terra and all of, all of the the grants that this really is a, a the constituents in the in the broader area that have worked on this to acknowledge that and to find to finish that work uh, as a council, and I just urge you to do that. Thank you. Jessica, <laughs> maybe it's my eyes, but the, it's F I G, a couple letters. Here, I'm here. I'm here. Oh, okay. Thank you so much. Uh, it's my name is Jessica Figueroa. I'm a Bothell resident, um, and I'm here against the heroin injection site. So I thank you for taking the time. I know this is a long night. I really, really appreciate it. I just want to acknowledge that the topic of heroin injection sites have been ignored by the Bothell City Council, and that's a bummer because I've lived here for a while and I really care. And I really want to say that I'm bummed out that things have been blocked, and I don't know why, but somebody does. I just want to ask the council to respect the, res the requests of the residents. I know you're, we're all residents in this, I get it, and you guys have taken up a big job. I respect that. I want to address the issue to ask for a permanent ban on the injection sites. Who am I? Who am I? I'm a mom. I'm a parent. I'm a wife. We all can relate to who we are in society. What we do, I serve the community. I work with homeless from the past to the present. I care about the broken. I look around this room and I see signs and cutouts of salmon because we care about the salmon and the land and the restoration. I hear restoration. I hear restoration. This is not a beat poet moment, believe me. But what I do hear is that how do we restore people? We have power and influence and we have money. How are we using these resources? What do we do with our youth? And these young people behind me and Kat said something about the root of this issue. Gee, we resuscitate people who are dying to give them death to then be, have life, then have death again. I'm confused and I'm stymied because I believe in more. And this is not ideology of Pollyanna land. I believe as people, as humanity, we want restoration for the fish. We want restoration for the land. We want something right for the people. And I can look at my kids and I can say, yeah, we don't have needles on the parks and we don't have hep C and it's a big epidemic. It's real. I get it. But we've got to put some money towards some of the counseling because if they're covering what their darkest, darkest trauma is, how do we reach it? We've got to put money into some of saving mental life and health and heart. And we have to have wholeness again. 
So I just want to say personally, as a member of the community, I ask you the council to schedule heroin injection site for the agenda, please. No later than December 5th. Work with all of us. We want to work together. Thank you. Frank Bone. Bring bound. <clears throat> I want to just uh, briefly urge the council to uh, put consideration of banning the safe injection sites on your December 5th agenda. It seems to me that there are a lot of very practical considerations that are being glibly glossed over by the proponents of these safe injection sites, a lot of public safety considerations liability considerations, practical operating considerations. Uh, if I were a member of this council, I'd be very concerned about the, uh, the city's legal position. If one of these sites were located in your community. So uh, uh, considering all of those things that uh, I think need to be considered, I think it's absolutely imperative that you take this take this matter up. Let me let me give you just one example. Uh, I got into a debate with the proponents of the safe injection sites down in Seattle a few weeks ago. Uh, a number of them identified themselves as public health nurses and so forth, and people who uh, were authoritative authoritative on the on the subject. I, I started asking them just some practical questions like. Who is it that makes sure that what an addict brings into one of these sites to inject is in fact heroin? I mean, how do you know it hasn't been laced with heavy distillate or something or embalming fluid or, or whatever? Who's, who's going to, it just seems to me that there are so many practical questions that arise around this matter that you have to take it up formally. and. Uh, uh, so I would urge you to put it on your agenda as such. Thank you. Catherine Duong. Good evening, everyone. My name is Catherine Young. Um, I wanted to first thank you for having us here and hearing us all out. Um, I'm a new resident of King County. Formerly, I grew up in uh, Pierce County. And I'm here on, to speak tonight on behalf of the um, opposition to safe injection sites. I grew up in a pretty rough community. Um, friends I grew up with, I saw the effects of drug use from their parents. Um, and it caused, you know, children to have to grow up too quickly to take care of themselves and to take care of their parents. And so to anyone who proposes the idea that enabling drug use and enabling um, that the kind of addictive lifestyle, I have to strongly and passionately disagree. And I understand that there has been some um, opposition or passiveness to getting this on the agenda for the city of Bothell. And to that, I have to actively disagree. I think that it's very important to address these issues while we still have a chance to sort of bring it back to the humanity. You know, these are our children, these are our friends, these are people of our community who are going to be affected by this. And so I just ask that as a member of the community that you would put uh, this topic on the agenda no later than December 5th so that the people can have a chance to uh, speak out against it and to help protect and uplift each other. Thank you. Jordan Ballinger. Uh, hello. I don't have much to say. I just want to ask that uh, the council put the uh, heroin injection sites on the agenda no later than December 5th. Uh, thank you. Nicholas Sheldon.
council members, good evening. I'm sure you've heard this plenty of times before, as are many others here wearing red scarves. But we'd like to see this on the agenda no later than December 5th. Now, I like what Alex said about wrapping it all kind of together. This is an issue I don't think I don't think I have to explain what heroin and other addictions do to your lifestyle. But one thing I might want to add is that when you have an addiction, you'll do just about anything in your power to get that next hit. And whether that's legal or otherwise, you'll do anything you can. Now to correct that lifestyle, whatever the addiction may be, it takes work. And I'm afraid our society right now is addicted to being easy. And I'm not going to say anything here is going to be easy, but this is an issue we need to face. And so I'd like to see this issue put up for discussion, because we don't want these injection sites. Thank you. Eben Curtis. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you, council members, for being here tonight. I'm watching you from the sidelines and hearing people's passion or hearing people uh, state stories from their family. It's, it's a lot to handle, so thank you very much for being here and listening to us. Um, I'm Evan Curtis. I'm coming from Federal Way tonight to speak out against the idea of a safe injection site for the consumption of illegal drugs. I cannot in any conscience agree with or allow egress of influence of drugs into our communities. Please do not wane away from the controversial issues. Place safe injection sites on the agenda no later than December 5th. I have to ask would any members of the council desire uh, any members of their household an opportunity to safely and legally use these drugs? I know I wouldn't. I do not want to bring children up in a world where no right from wrong, you simply have to walk through a doorway. Please put a permanent ban on heroin use in this country. Thank you. Claude R. Allen. Yes, I live and work in Seattle. Uh, I'm a security officer, and I've done this for uh, five years. Um, and I deal with these people every day, and multiple times every day, on the waterfront, Pioneer Square, and uh, the downtown core. <clears throat> so, um, I, I'm not in agreement. I don't think that I don't think that any drugs, any illegal drugs, should be should be used. Uh, all of these drugs that um, they're wanting to use in, at the safe injection site or schedule one drugs. So um, I think marijuana is just as dangerous as the rest of them. Um, so I hope this is placed on the agenda for December 5th. And I hope that we get to hear from each of you on your position uh, regarding the use of illegal narcotics. Thank you. Gigi Wickwire. Good, good evening. It's been a, a long time since I've been here, and not because I don't pay attention and watch, and when I'm tending a little one. So as I begin, I want to say thank you, and especially to the outgoing council members. Thank you, Council Member Sandberg and Spivey and Freed for your service through the good times and the bad times and the growing and stretching. I'm really grateful. Um, there's been work that's been important, and I'm here to continue to have my voice be part of that work, which is um, conservation and the hope and vision for what Bothell can be and what it is, and um, having heartful, mindful, big vision possibilities be at the center of our conversation as Bothell changes so quickly. Um, I 
don't have prepared remarks. Um, I wish I had humor at this point in the night, like in that way to say like, what does it look like for us to take in this information and keep our ears and our hearts open for what's necessary. So the only thing I know to do is to be um, a voice for my kiddo and for the children and for the future generations. And in particular, um, thinking about how will I explain both of these issues tonight. I'm like really compelled about the complexity of the heartbreak in the room and then the possibility of beauty in the room. <sighs> really, truly profound. And um, so I think about the beauty and what's possible with Wayne's golf course and um, my hope and prayer, my hope and desire, um, longing would be that you continue the voice of One Bothell forward, that you have um, the opportunity to respond to and hold the vision that the community has held through the time and um, ushering and carrying this to where we are now and that you um, have their desire and our desire, my desire, my children's desire um, forefront and find that way to actually do the dance that's necessary between city government using staff's recommendations but also the community's voice and find that marriage that's necessary. I know it's possible <laughs> um, and we can continue to do it differently than it's been done until now. And um, I will say that in that land, as a registered nurse and a, a social worker, a licensed social worker, that um, we didn't have to decide what we're talking about tonight. So I'll straddle that other issue, which is, um, I think it would be really hard for me to explain to my child what went wrong with Wayne's golf course, if it goes wrong. And I think it would be really hard to explain to my child what a safe injection site looks like and what that is. So I recognize you have very complex decisions in front of you this evening. And my hope is that you will um, think about the health and the well-being of our community as you make decisions um, in the way that you were charged with, as well as I know that is in the source of who you are in your own family of origin and those other things. So thank you for your service. Happy holidays. Good to see you all. Good night. <laughs> So we are at the end of the stack. It's an impressive size, though. Um, yeah, thank you. But does anybody else, would anybody else like to give public comment? There we go. I knew it. Go ahead. <laughs> come up to the dais and give your name for the record. Uh, good evening, Council. Uh, my name is Steve Holmes, resident and businessman in the city of Bothell, my favorite place to be. Um, on the, my company runs the kayak rental down in Bothell Landing. Well, I got two points to make. I don't really want to talk about that. I just want to mention, I, you already know my feelings on Wayne's golf course. I like to keep it as natural as possible. Uh, our paddlers love launching their boats at Bothell Landing, going down that way and watching nature. So I'll leave that alone so I know that you are gonna vote yes on purchasing it. The second thing I would like to talk about, <clears throat> uh, my wife and I raised three daughters here. Um, our last daughter went to Bothell High. She had a rough time there. She, at a young age, she went to three or four funerals for her classmates that overdosed. And if my daughter was here now, because uh, she's at work, she would say her story on it, but it was really tough for her at a young age going to that many funerals with our local kids that passed away. And I think most of you um, are against the ejection site. And so maybe someone misheard or maybe I'm wrong, but I know for a fact that this city council will eject it and not allow safe sites for heroin ejection. And I hope that you do vote that way. And we need to keep our city as clean as possible because we're doing a great job as it is. But let's not turn and go the other way. And I would also like to say, of all your help, all of you, thank you for representing the city of Bothell. And I know that you guys put a lot of hours in and you hear a lot of comment and you have to listen to a lot of people and you have to make your decision the right way. And so I thank you for that and good evening.
Hello, I'll try to make this quick. I know it's been a long evening. My name is Hillary Sanders. Address is 325 233rd Street Southwest. I've been a resident of Bothell for over 20 years, and I'm here in support of the acquisition of Wayne Golf Course. Uh, I am a member with the Shelton Before Stewards Group. I'm also on the Bothell Parks Foundation, and I've agreed with everything that David Bain and uh, other members of North the North Creek Forest, uh, Friends of North Creek Forest and other community members have brought up. Um, just one thing that I would add is that the national norm for parks and open space is 10 acres per 1,000 people. And as of right now, Bothell is far from meeting this standard. So much so that it is unlikely that we will meet the goals outlined by the Parks, Recreation, and Open Space Action Program. The acquisitions of Wayne, North Creek Forest, and Shelton View Forest will help. Uh, but we need park impact fees to maintain these spaces, especially as Bothell grows. I feel like I need more information about uh, the reasons for potentially rejecting the grants that I know were worked on very hard over many years by many different groups and people. Um, I don't, I'm not sure I understand why we would walk away from that money. Um, maybe some more information would help, but as of right now, I would support us uh, accepting those grant funds um, and not leave that money on the table and, and, and use that to uh, preserve important parts of Wayne that are vital for salmon and recovery. Thank you. Hi, my name is Lori Gogich and thank you very much for listening me, to me talk. Um, even though I'm not a resident of Bothell, I live very close to the Wayne Golf Course, just inside the city, Kirkland City limits. I love the Sammamish River and spend many hours on the banks. I do water quality monitoring for the Snow King Watershed Council at both Blythe Park and Blue Heron Landing. I'm also a salmon watcher for Bothell at two sites on the Sammamish River. My love of the Sammamish River stems from my desire to help our endangered southern resident killer whales who are struggling to find enough salmon to survive. To advocate for salmon means to ag advocate for these orcas who desperately need our help. Our salmon and our orcas have no voice at the table, so I'm speaking on their behalf tonight. The Wayne Golf Course along the Sammamish River has a big impact on wild salmon and killer whales. Restoring this property by planting native trees and shrubs along the riverbank will provide the necessary shade that will allow migrating adult salmon cooler water temperatures in their travels up the, the, the river to spawn. This shade will also provide critical habitat for the rearing and out-migrating juvenile salmon as they grow in the river and then journey out to Puget Sound and beyond. These native trees and shrubs will also cut down on erosion of the banks and help to filter pollutants before they wash into the river, plus they add beauty. By purchasing this property in its entirety, you will not only be helping the salmon and orca, but you will be providing a place for people in the community to enjoy nature and the outdoors. A place for community to gather, walk trails, watch the birds, salmon, and other wildlife that will prosper in the park. People enjoying the park will also be able to enjoy bottle shops and restaurants to help the local economy. Therefore, I strongly request that you vote yes on the acquisition for the entire Wayne Golf Course. This future regional park will benefit the people who come to enjoy its beauty, boost Bothell's economy, and care for our watershed that supports our endangered Chinook salmon and resident orcas. Thank you for your serious consideration of my request. Good evening, Council. Hope everybody has a great, happy Thanksgiving. My name is Sandy Alto. I live up on West Hill. And uh, I'm here for two very short reasons. One is to urge you to acquire the Wayne Golf Course. It's been a long, long couple of years for everyone in town. And also to reject staff's recommendation regarding the conservation grants. Um, the second item has to do with safe injection sites, which um, I am opposed to in the city of Bothell. But um, when this issue came up, I emailed um, Mayor Ryum, Davina Dern, Tom Agnew, James McNeil, Tris Sandberg. Sorry that I left you guys out, but um, 
you have to mail every person one at a time. I also man, um, mail the uh, candidates that are coming into office. And I'm confused because um, under King County Ordinance, I can't remember the number, line 466, um, safe injection sites are banned in King County unless you vote to host one. So I'm confused why you would host to ban them when they're, when, why you would vote to ban them when they're already banned. Um, so I don't think anyone here in Bothell has anything to be concerned about in that regard. The second issue was that I was told by um, several of you, and all of these emails are part of the public record. I'm not reading them here tonight because I don't have the time. But um, it's my understanding that uh, both King County and Snohomish County both said that Bothell is in no way a good uh, solution for a safe injection site, should one ever come to pass, um, for lots of reasons. We don't have the infrastructure, we're not a large size, there's other, many, many other places in, in the county where uh, the situation is more severe than what we have here, we're not near a hospital, and so on and so on. So. Um, you know, we brought a lot of people came out here tonight to talk about what is a very serious, serious issue and uh, an epidemic uh, here and everywhere, actually, in the United States. But um, I just wanted to, you know, I mean, I have been told that my concerns about having a safe inje injection site are not a concern. So uh, I just wanted to share that with the folks in Bothell and urge them that if you haven't sat down to have a one-on-one -on -one with our members of council, you should. They host uh, hours. Um, they all respond to email. They all respond to phone calls. And when I called Mayor Ryum about this particular situation, he called me right back and told me that he had not heard from anyone on the phone about this situation. He said, I am shocked, <laughs> and I was shocked, that no one had called him about this. So, you know, these are our neighbors, um, and you can talk to them face to face. That's it. Thank you. Hello, my name is Marla Selgeland. My husband was stepped up here before. And we've lived in Bothell for 50, maybe 54 years in our house across the street from the high school. And um, it's been a wonderful place. I can't tell you, if I could paint you a picture of what Bothell was then, I think it said, welcome to Bothell for a day or a lifetime, population 7,000. <laughs> And the, and the wonderful experiences our children have had, and we have too, and wouldn't ever want to live anyplace else. I can't imagine, with, with all those things that can be, why we would let something come in, like the uh, injection center, to spoil it. I mean, there's, there's, enough, there's enough choices for kids to make out there, and adults too, and I think we need to keep to keep, maybe keep, keep Satan away from him a little bit and um, do our job. So please, and, and knowing that you all live here and, and love it too, uh, I wish you a happy Thanksgiving and go Bothell. <laughs> Is there anybody else that would like to provide public comment? City Manager, did you want to speak to the December 5th that we've heard that uh, I think a couple times about having it on that night? Absolutely. Um, so based on the council priorities and, and um, the goals that you have provided for me, um, the 21st, the 5th, and the 12th um, are all full council meetings and I've been repeatedly given direction um, and gently reminded that I'm not to schedule more than three hours worth of um, topics on one evening. And so at this point, um, the agendas through the end of the year are, are full. Um, and and that's, that's a council direction. Could you speak to the projected agenda? Because it, it is on there. Um, the injection sites? Um, certainly. So um, at the council meeting in September, uh, the council took a vote to um, not schedule a discussion on the in injection sites in October, um, and so it was placed on the pending agenda. And so the opportunity then, when we have the discussion with the new council in January, would be to look at this topic as um, one of the priorities and determine where in the docketing it would fall, because it does require a code amendment. 
Um, and and I'd, I'd like to reiterate, currently the, the Bothell Municipal Code does not allow injection sites in the city of Bothell. So, 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 the, so the, the item that I, I would need direction from council on, on what exactly you would want me to bring because the prohibition of injection sites is already in the Bothell Municipal Code. Okay, thank you. Since we've had a discussion about the projected agenda, um, I would like to make the motion that we add a discussion of safe injection sites using um, as an Council example. Councilmember Sam, you're out of order because we already decided on the projected agenda earlier and, in the agenda. And so point of order, I would ask that. What's your point of order? Because you discussed the project, you brought up the projected agenda, that I would also like to bring up the projected agenda and suspend our regular meeting process in response to the testimony that we've heard tonight to ask the council on making a motion to add a discussion of safe injection sites to our December 5th meeting. And if that requires pushing some of the items from December 5th to what looks like a relatively empty December 12th meeting, I would support that. Is there a second? Second. So it's been moved and seconded to move the conversation on the heroin injection sites to December what day? Fifth. Any discussion on the motion? Yeah. Customer Freed. Great. So I've been very close to this issue over the last six months. I've actually gone up to Canada five different times and visited uh, Insight. And it's a very sad facility to see. Um, as I've visited several times, I've gotten out of the car and even one visit, there were five people shooting up drugs, uh, heroin in their arms as I walked to the front door. Um, I talked to a gal named Sarita who talked to her for a little while. Then she shot up in front of Insight and then took a knife out and started to stab the building because she was upset that an undercover police officer that I was with took a photo with his iPhone. I've talking, uh, had conversations with Parker, with Marcel, with many people on the street um, that have been up there and not getting the help that they need in the form of treatment. And that's something that we as a society should be dedicated to. The environment around heroin injection sites in Canada is apocalyptic. There's girls selling themselves for dollars so they can get their hit for heroin. There's drug dealers on every street. I had a drug dealer uh, look straight at me in the eye, full tattooed face, an MS-13 team or game member that said our conversation is over and I needed to move down the street, which of course I agreed to. So I moved down the street where I met a gentleman that, as I was talking to my wife, a gal uh, kicked a can at Lindy and then ran up and wanted to sell her heroin there. Um, and he told me, well, you don't need to buy heroin, you just get heroin down the street for free. Just go down to the laundromat, take a left at the laundromat, and you can get your free heroin. Canada is now giving free heroin away. It's an incremental step process that happens when you open the door of these type of things. It moves to places that you don't ever hope that they go to. Listen, King County right now, I've been down to many meetings, and it is not an accurate statement to say that heroin injection sites will not be placed in our community unless the city of Bothell says that we want them. I've heard Rod Dabowski, myself um, say, listen, if we, uh, there was an uh, initiative 27, 70,000 votes, we got it on the ballot, then it was kicked off, but yet King County Council says we need to have an alternative to that. And one of the things that was put on or tried to put on as an addendum to it was to say that we need to make sure that cities can ban these. And Rod Dabowski talked about, no, these will be an essential public service. Listen, regardless of a ban on a city or not, uh, King County can place heroin injection sites because they consider it a public health issue. That's the very reason why the judge pushed I-27 out because it's a public health issue. They didn't want us as citizens to have the right to talk about that. So I want the city of council to ban it because there are four originators of the opioid task force. One, Dow, uh, Dow Constantine. Second was Ed Murray. The other two, Dennis Law, and Nancy Backus, both their two cities banned heroin injection sites within their community. So if those two originators of the opioid task force say, no, we don't want heroin injection sites within their city, and they move forward with the ban, why would the city of Bothell sit in ignorance or complacency and say no, that our code already blocks it? Listen, there's cities that are unanimously blocking it within their cities. All of Snohomish County took a ban, bipartisan. This is not Republican, this is not Democrat, it's not Green. This is about people making sure we point them to health. It costs four and a half million dollars a year to support Insight. Four and a half million dollars. They want two of these in King County as a start, 
as a test project. That's $9 million that could go toward treatment. That should be our heart as a society, not a place that allows people to continue to use heroin, but say, no, what you're doing is harmful to you. Let's get you back into health and back to a place that they need you or we want you to be in society. So my hope and prayer is that the Bothell City Council says, listen, we are a city that does want heroin injection sites. We don't want them here. We want our current treatment center that doesn't have drug dealers, that doesn't have uh, gals selling themselves or dollars. That's what we want within our city because the environment around a heroin injection sites where you legalize heroin use as compared to a place that says get back to health is drastically different. I don't want Bothell to be a place that would say, uh, we're not gonna ban it at this point, we're just gonna kinda leave the options open. No, let's shut the door today like Snohomish County did, two members of the opioid task force and 10 other cities within the city or the county. So please join me, let's make it extremely clear to King County leadership, thank you. Any, any further discussion on the motion? Deputy Mayor? I won't, I won't be supporting the motion. I don't think that gives staff proper time. And I think if we're going to have a serious discussion, then we should hear all sides and do it from a place of education and not um, one-sided. And I, I've already been on the record as being opposed to safe injection sites. Um, and I, I don't understand it's already banned. So it feels like it's just a political um, drumming up of people's emotions. And I've already been accused several times by speakers of being in support and wanting one. And, and so to me, that, that says that, that there's, not, there's no logic to this. It's, it's just trying to, trying to use people's emotions. I, I'm in favor of, of discussing it early in the year when the staff has time to prepare and when we have a chance to get other people to come and educate us on both sides. Any further discussion on the motion? Councilmember Sandberg. I propose this motion not because I want to make it a political matter. This is an, an important issue to the community. I also share the concern that if King County feels these, these can be considered essential public health facilities, they may not honor their early agreement that they would not put these facilities in cities that choose to ban them. They may be able to use that essential public facility siting to justify putting them where they think they need to be. Um, and what we've heard tonight is not that people don't support addicts. They just, they don't feel that safe injection is the way to do that. What I heard overwhelmingly is that people support treatment. And I share the concern that we have a limited amount of resources and um, not only do I oppose safe injection sites in the city, I oppose safe injection sites in general because if I have those resources available to help people, I wanna use it towards treatment, not towards sites that enable behavior. And I think that's what I've heard from the community. And so um, I think they want us to explicitly ban safe injection sites um, I think there is the opportunity to invite um, people from multiple sides of the subject to 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 bear uh, you know to bring um, information regarding their positions, and um, so that's why I made the motion, and um, I hope the council will agree to have this conversation. I mean, we 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 did not agree to have this conversation back in September. And I, you know, I wish we had because we wouldn't have had this amount of public outrage and maybe some uh, misinformation that has stirred up the community. Council, Council Member, um, sorry, which one, Agnew first? Okay. I'll be not be supporting this motion uh, and for a number of reasons. I believe that what we're dealing with is an epidemic. Uh, and I believe epidemics are usually treated by physicians. Uh, I think it's wrong for politicians to try to get involved and dictate uh, medical treatment to people. I think we all agree that uh, what's needed here is treatment. 
uh, not a consumption site, and they're called, actually called consumption sites, and there was only one speaker that actually knew that. I think staff needs to have more time than a week or two uh, to put together some information for us. So I, I won't be supporting this motion. Councilmember McNeil. Um, I won't be supporting the motion either. However, I want to make sure that I take the opportunity to tell the community at large, whether it be my community here in Bothell or at large, I am also a parent, father of two nine-year-old kids. Uh, I am opposed to it. However, I believe that as everybody came forward and spoke tonight, I believe that we need to hear from everybody. This is an epidemic. This is not something that's gonna get cured overnight, but we need to have things that are brought to us that we can hear. I understand a lot of folks are from outside of our community. I want to hear from folks inside of our community on how they feel about this. But I want to make sure that I'm very clear on this. I in no way am supportive of having a site here, but I also know that at this particular point, I've been told by our city manager and others outside that we cannot have right now at this present moment that no safe injection site would be put here, could be put here in Bothell. Thank you. Any further discussion, Councilmember Spivey? Great, thank you. Um, I'm going to support this. I just sat in an uh, hour and a half meeting with an individual where um, this subject came up and uh, brought to me testimony of doctors, groups that are getting together trying to figure out ways to um, work with the community to manage uh, the opioid abuse. Uh, in the community and these are and one thing that these doctors groups um, this doctors group said that was the consumption or safe injection site is not the answer that treatment is the answer um, so that being said I won't support this and just because it the county says and we do and it's in our ordinance there's no harm in reiterating our our um, position of no so I'm in uh, I'm in favor of reiterating our position of no so I will be supporting this so I think I'm the last um, so kind of a side note I just wanted people to know that I've been in contact with executive summers out of Snohomish County and on December 12th the council will be uh, having a resolution in front of them to initiate the incident command system for the entirety of Snohomish County in a partial fashion uh, to address the opioid epidemic in Snohomish County so there's some silver lining uh, to my statement I hope um, the other part and I, I'd encourage people to look at the September 3rd meeting it's the first 15 minutes you can hear us have this discussion which we did on September uh, September 3rd I believe it was um, I think a couple of really important things to point out one there is obviously a majority of this council that will not allow or vote to have a safe injection site in the city uh, I think the other thing that we were very clear about is that we wanted to study this further if we were going to bring it forward uh, we have a lot of stuff on our agenda that takes a ton of uh, staff resources and to add something with two weeks um, is is just just kind of for reference is typically not likely going to happen with cities uh, it just takes time we need to move slowly that's why we the city government moves at the pace it does because we try to make good decisions educated decisions and we can't do that without our staff um, so I'm going to vote no on having this brought back up again on December 5th and I hope that uh, the community can respect us and give us some time to work on it. It is on our projected agenda. We have to prioritize our work and this is not something that has been prioritized. So, Can I make an amending motion? Sure. Um, I would um, make an amending motion that the council bring up this discussion at one of its February meetings, February 2018. Is there a second? Seeing none, the motion fails. So we're back to the underlying motion, which is to hear this December 5th. If everybody's had a chance to speak, go ahead and place your vote. Your vote of yes would be to hear it on December 5th. Uh, fails four to three uh, with council members uh, Spivey, Freed, and Sandberg in the affirmative. That brings us to the end of our 
visitor comments. Um, I think we need a break. So we're going to take a 15 minute break and be back here at, oh wow, it's already 8.20. <laughs> we're gonna be back here at 8.40. Shame.